Hi everyone, it's Di here from DiMcDonald.com. Um, I thought today I wouldn't hide behind the camera anymore because I have a lot of questions from you and I wanted to answer them. We've had a bit of a drama here today with our cat Coco being really sick but unfortunately um, she's starting to settle down now so actually that's why I'm so late. Sorry about that. And then I had a phone call from Jill Mars, if any of you know from doll making. Her and I are really good friends and we had a long chat. It's lovely to have such a wonderful and talented friend. So anyway, I'm going to start today by talking about um, the questions that people have been asking me. Now, some of you who watch this may not know, but I used to be a doll maker and a doll designer. And um, I did that for quite a lot of years, about eight years, I think. And um, and then I found after a while that I started using different media on my dolls and then I wanted a larger canvas. So that's when I started doing mixed media art. So in those days, um, I used to run some Yahoo groups and I still have those groups, um, although they haven't been active for a long time, there are still people on them. So I actually wrote to them uh, by email the other day and asked if anybody would like to um, stay on them and um, and catch up again. And I've had quite a lot of emails and um, comments to the blog, which has been really lovely and really nice to hear from old friends again. So here are some of the questions that I've received from Diane Delica. Um, she asked me how many are on the Dicey list. And there are about 325, but I do quite expect some people to um, to unsubscribe now that they realise that they're on there. Because while you're not getting any messages, you don't don't realise. Um, and she asked, where in New Zealand am I living? I'm actually living in Oteki Beach, which is um, on the North Island, um, about one and a quarter hours north of Wellington. And um, we just live one street away from the beach, which we just love. Haven't spent a lot of time at the beach yet, but um, we are planning on making the most of it soon. And she's also asked that can she sign up somewhere to get emails and to get the blog posts. Well, pretty soon I will have a um, button on the blog where you can sign up for feed burner or to get feeds, RSS feeds from the um, from the blog and that way um, you'll never miss any. And the other thing is that I do put um, messages on Facebook every time I publish a blog post so that that's easy to find. And I will also um, put um, a, a button on the blog at diemcdonald.com to show you to sh so that anybody can sign up to the Dizey email Yahoo list. Okay, thanks, Diane. It was lovely to hear from you again. Um, Karen Hurstowski. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just call you Karen. Um, she says it's like having an old friend back, and I thought that was a lovely thing to say. And um, I've missed all my old friends too. And she's telling me about Zen Tangles and how they are the next big thing in America. And I have noticed that because I still, all the way through, have always spent a lot of time on the computer browsing and seeing what's going on in the art scene. And um, some of these Zen Tangles are amazing. I haven't really had a go at them yet. I don't know whether I'd be much good, but um, I probably will at some stage. And I love the fact that everybody's doing a lot of doodling now. And so that'll be something else that I'll be looking at in the future. Giselle asked about the latest blog post, um, which was this journal page. I'll just get it right so you can see this journal page here that I had made. And I told, I had said that the face was fabric. And she wanted to know what fabric did I use for the face. Okay, well, what I use is I just use normal muslin. Um, we call it calico here in New Zealand and Australia. This is what it looks like. Hang on, get it over here. 
And what I do is I tea and coffee diet, so it ends up looking like this, um, a darker colour, because I think it's much more realistic to our skin. You know, if you look at... Oh, wrong hand. This is really strange when you look at the monitor. But if you look at my skin and that colour, it's a lot more brown than the white of the calico. So I always like to do that tea and coffee dyeing. And actually, in this picture that I created, I don't know if anybody noticed. Nobody, actually my husband mentioned it, but nobody else has at this stage. But down here, looks like she's crying. And that's part of the tea dyeing. Um, but I didn't mean it to be a sad face. I've actually got a bit of this calico cord on my rings. So, um, and so basically she was done on a watercolour page and quite a thick watercolour paper. And um, I did her neck in the fabric as well. And these flowers are glued on afterwards. So they give a three-dimensional aspect to the page. Um, the other thing is, Karen, not Karen, Giselle asked, um, how did I glue it down? So I just use a normal glue stick um, to glue that down onto the paper and it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. I didn't want to use a liquid glue because I was worried that the colour might come through or the wet patch might come through onto the face. So I hope that answers your questions. Okay, now the next question I've had is from Marianne Hull. And she's asking, how does one get started learning about mixed media techniques? Um, now, I just wanted to tell you, you know, because a lot of us were doll makers to begin with, um, I just started using more mixed media on my dolls, like on the dresses. Um, you know, when we're talking about mixed media, we're only talking about using different mediums like beading, like paper, like um, uh, fibre, like threads, like yarn, wool, um, felt. Um, what else could you use? I'm just trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, basically the sky's the limit, limit. And how I started was I just started embellishing my dolls more and more with other mediums or other media, and um, and then it got to the stage it just wasn't enough body of the doll um, to make a big enough canvas for me. So then I started, I actually started doing some work on, in books, altered books, um, and using a lot more paper. And from there I went on to um, experimenting with anything I could find um, I found that I was very comfortable with paper, using paper. I mean, I love to use fabric. I love to make things out of fabric and I love to sew. So that fabric, I think, will always be in my mixed media, my mixed media work. Um, some of the, the, um, the journal pages that I've done, as I say, now I'm starting to add fabrics into them. So it'll be interesting to see, and I'd really like to add some beading, but you do have to be very careful what size holes you're making in the paper because um, they can be quite, um, can break quite easily. So I hope that answers the question. What I would do if I was wanting to get into mixed media now, I think, would be to buy a journal and start playing in a journal. Um if you go to YouTube and uh, and search for um, journal, art journaling pages, you'll be able to watch videos of people doing their art journals. And that is so um, helpful, especially for someone visual like me. And, um, and see what they're doing with their pens and pencils and their paints. And, and then start having a play yourself, uh, Mary. Marianne, um, what I would do also is maybe look at starting off with a, what they call a smash journal, a junk journal, that's right. Um, I saw a video on YouTube the other night, which I really liked. They were making a smash journal out of an old composition book. And that's sort of to add um, 
and your knickknacks, bits of cards and things that people send you, messages. And at the same time, you start using stamping and you start um, adding a few doodles here and there. That's that's how I would get started, Marianne, and then go from there. And if you want to, combine the two with the um, dolls as well. And um, that's about it. Okay, thanks very much for visiting, and I hope you um, visit the blog more, uh, continue to visit the blog, and um, I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.